Now, when I was younger and I used to watch movies and as the years would go by, I would look back at the movies that had come out about two or five years prior and I would go, whoa, those look bad. Like, I used to watch the Star Wars prequels all the time and I just thought that they had the most amazing special effects ever. But then, like, five years later, I look back and went, oh, those look absolutely terrible. I didn't realize that they had actually CGI'd everything from the backgrounds to the buildings to everything and in retrospective, it all looks pretty fake. But every time we would get a new movie or something, we would see new technology and it would be more detailed, it would look more real, it would be more solid, and it would just put whatever came out before to shame. Now I always had a little thing against CGI because a lot of the times it would look really watery to me. At times I would really prefer like puppeteering and stuff like that to CGI creatures because the CGI creatures would always just look really watery and fake. In fact that is what has informed one of my opinions that I still hold to this day that nothing CGI has ever been scary. I have not watched one CGI creature in a horror movie that has ever been scary and I think if you really want to scare people in a horror film then you do not you should not use CGI at all you should try to use practicals because practical things have a weight to them you can always sense that they're there even if they don't look great then there's still that sense that it's real and oftentimes when you're trying to work with something practical it's gonna look really strange it's gonna look really raw it's gonna look really off from what we expect in real life and that's why I think that practical effects and stuff like that works really well for horror and that CGI has been a detriment to the horror genre. But CGI does have its place. When we were getting more superhero films, we needed to have characters like the Incredible Hulk, the Incredible Hulk who could never be done justice without CGI, and Thanos, of course, who could not be done without CGI, and their CGI looked really great. It was solid, you could barely tell any of the fluidity for it, and you really bought into it. And that's the way things were for years, and despite my misgivings about CGI in horror films, CGI technology just kept getting better and better, and there was less and less of that sort of watery look to it that would take me out of it, and it was amazing to see how the technology would get better every year, even if it made other films that have been in the past look bad by comparison. But for maybe the past five years or so, that's really, really rewound. I no longer look at films from five years ago and think, wow, doesn't look this look doesn't this look dated compared to now? I look back at films from five years ago and go, wow, doesn't that look amazing? Like ten times more amazing than anything we have now in terms of CGI. I've never seen it happen before in the movie industry where it seems like technology for special effects has regressed. Even as they're throwing more and more money at these projects, it seems that the, the CGI is getting worse and worse and worse. It looks like an old PlayStation cutscene a lot of the times. The wateriness comes through a lot more. The fakeness of everything where you can tell people are standing in front of a green screen so many times. And CGI has kind of become a bad word because of that. It's kind of considered the ultimate cop-out to creating a movie. The idea of using just practical effects has been something that people who are film nerds put on somewhat of a pedestal. That's why some filmmakers have been bragging that they only use practical effects. Even though that does not necessarily mean the quality of your special effects or your movie are going to be any better, honestly. James Gunn was bragging about how he used practical effects for the Suicide Squad, but honestly, for the for the effects in that movie, I didn't hear them getting a lot of buzz. But people are used to seeing everything just look so fake now that there are some people who really gravitate towards the idea of things just being practical. But like I said, I've never seen it before where we seem to have regressed in terms of our technology. And I know why, like it's no secret, CGI artists have come over and gone on TikTok and social media and explained and complained that essentially what's happened is they're asked to do so much work on these movies in such unrealistic time barriers that there's absolutely no way they can get it all done. As was explained by a CGI artist on TikTok, essentially what happens with these companies is they will have a certain amount of shots and uh, basically they will form out, let's say, uh, just for an example, a hundred shots to a CGI company to do. And that can be anywhere from just needing to get a line or a boom mic out of a shot or needing to CGI the entire thing, the sky, the, 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 uh, the fighting effects, all of that. And that is why it is just a broken system and why it is just so impossible to get the CGI looking right these days when these artists are overworked and abused and they do not, they have the technology, they have the know-how, but they do not have enough time to get it out there. But part of that is also as well that they've that Hollywood has become so reliant on CGI. There's more things that need to be CG'd than ever. For George Lucas, once again, he was uh, came under criticism that basically for Attack of the Clones and Phantom Menace, so much of that was just shot on uh, blue screen stages. And that's all the actors were acting against, blue screen stages. And he just was sitting in his chair and directing from there. And that's what we hear from Thor Love and Thunder. Christian Bale 
talked about how disheartening it was to get on set and all he would be doing is acting against green screens constantly. But despite that criticisms of the Star Wars prequels, I will admit it, I am a Star Wars prequel defender, definitely have their flaws. I'm not necessarily condoning the fact that George Lucas uh, went, went and directed everything from blue screens. However, I still find a lot to enjoy about the Star Wars prequels and a lot to appreciate about them. So even if you do have a film that is very green screen and blue screen heavy, I think that you can still have something come out of it. And what I was seeing pointed out by another video on YouTube is that having green screens, how is that much different than back in the day when they used to have actors go and perform in front of matte paintings and stages? What is really the difference? Well, the difference is if you can cover up whatever effect you're using and make people believe that this is actually happening. And that's what Hollywood has failed to do. People can no longer believe anything that they're seeing because everything looks so rushed and fake. I mean, we've just seen so much bad CGI. She-Hulk, for example, that was some of the most unbelievably bad CGI that I have ever seen from a Hollywood production in anything recently. I mean, I know it was a TV show. Maybe they didn't have enough money. They had about $225 million to work with. It wasn't enough money to... Oh, wait! $225 million? How? If they had a budget that high, higher than the first Avengers, and they couldn't even get... You would assume that it was going to the CGI, but the CGI looked absolutely terrible. And beyond that, the rest of the show was just talking. Where was that money going? Where is the money for these projects going? We assume it's the CGI, but is it really? I think that there's something else going on. I think that there's some problem in Hollywood beyond just the CGI that we're spending so much on the, these projects. It's just reckless spending, you see, and it's not producing any better results. But Hollywood executives seem to have become just so lenient on CGI. Everything needs to be CGI now, and I think that it just comes down to just total laziness, just wanting to do the bare minimum to get a product out, because that's what I really see, that they, they want to treat these things like they're products, like you're working at McDonald's, you're working at toys, that they can just just uh, create a formula for and spew out and it just doesn't look, work like that when you're working with stories and that's I think the problem we're seeing with AI I'm not saying that AI is not going to have its place in terms of what it can do but when I think of what AI can be used for is to like get a workload off of the you know the animators and the CGI artists working 16 hour days so that they can have ways to make their jobs easier but now I'm seeing that AI is just going to be used as another shortcut by these companies because they they already are trying to artificially intelligence everything and make it all CGI and make it all lazy and make it all as cheap as possible and as convenient as possible to get out there. But it's really disheartening for me because part of the joy of movies was watching how the technology would evolve and how the different effects would be used. And while a lot of that was practical effects and seeing the different ways you could manipulate people into believing a story, CGI was also part of that. Once again, I think that CGI uh, has its place where it should not be used but it also definitely has its place where it should be used. So much of the stuff we saw in Lord of the Rings couldn't have happened without CGI. Superhero movies could not have happened without CGI. CGI is not evil. It's just been very, very misused. But now we're not seeing technology advance with this laziness and this, you know, this abuse of the workers and this rushing of projects. We're just seeing the technology regress. And with the, something like AI coming forward, very controversial, I don't see that it's going to be used for what it should be used on. I think it's just going to be used for more cutting corners and less and less uh, respect for the actual creators who have actual inspirations to make this stuff. Boy, when I talk about the movie industry, though, it's like there's just so much that needs to be fixed. Bloated budgets, um, this overuse of CGI, and, uh, you know, I would say the abuse of CGI. And CGI can be good again. It can, uh, you know, get people excited again if only you would just use it correctly. Godzilla Minus One. I love that movie. I love what the team did with it, but, and as much as I think that they deserved the Oscar for it, they kind of just deserve the Oscar for doing what you should do with CGI, and there were some parts in the movie where the CGI was flawed, but I think the reason why we were gobsmacked by it, just surprised, is because it did what CGI is supposed to do. It gave the impression of something generally being real, and we could overlook some of the flaws in that, but most of the CGI that we've been seeing isn't even doing the bare minimum. 
But I guess it all comes back to respecting the audience again and, you know, respecting what the audience wants to see. Because I can't believe that Marvel, Marvel has been a big culprit for that, but so has Warner Brothers, that they've been shoving out CGI that looks like this and expects that the audience is going to buy into it in any way. The purpose of a special effect is to get the audience to believe something that isn't real. It goes back to even stage performances. You trick the audience into believing something is real. And that is not what the CGI has been doing. And it's really unfortunate that I'm looking at movies that came out literally 12 years ago, like the Avengers, and their CGI looks better than what we have today. But that's all I got for you guys today. What do you guys think about this whole CGI business? Uh, let me know in the comments below. What do you think can be done to fix the CGI problems in the movie industry? And how do you think that CGI artists can be treated better? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you, patrons, as always, for supporting this channel. And I will see you guys next time.